there's some rumor and innuendo out there about you and Russo. Do you want to touch on that or no? Yeah. I mean, here's, uh, here's kind of where all, all that, I don't even know where to kind of jump off, but I've said many times publicly and privately, and even to Vince via email, Vince, I forgive you. Uh, you made your decisions and I understand that they're not any business of mine, but it is what it is. So you go your way and I go my way. Well, and as life happens and things start bowling up and start bowling up out of conversation, not about Vince, but uh, w- with a, I'll call it a, a mentor of mine who basically said uh, it, as a part of this general conversation, Hey Jeff, what you don't know, you don't know. Mm. And what they don't know, they don't know. And in my brain, as that day went on, I thought to myself, self, no, but I thought to myself, you know, he's got a good point. And um, I think it may be time for me to, uh, now enough water's gone under the bridge. Um, I'm going to look, and I, and again, I've, I've, I've made, and will continue to make my amends because for a lot of years, I was a tornado in, in my family's life, in my business life, about everywhere I went. Uh, so I I'm going to reach out to him. It's, it's, it's a part of the program. It's a part of who I am today. And so uh funny story is when I reached out, I, neither phone number that I had on Vince worked. That's how old of numbers they were. Uh, but I did have a working email. Uh, he's uh a dinosaur like some of us. I still have my AOL address, although rarely, rarely use it. He's, he, he does use his anyway, I emailed him and I said, Hey, you want to jump on a call? And he responded, he responded. Yep. And so we got on a phone call and, uh, nice chatter talk up front, uh, and then got into the kind of meat and potatoes of it, of, I just wanted to pick his brain and I was an open book and you pick my brain. And I went right to the kind of heart of, what I just said, and there were some private matters discussed, but obviously I've touched on them through the years, uh, with the Carter family, with the TNA situation, uh, even with some personal stuff. Um, I mean, I, we could go on and on and on, but in general, I I wanted to know kind of where his head was at. And I wanted him to ask me any questions he had to find out where my head was at. And that was the conversation that took place. Uh, and, and, you know, like any form of communication, just having communication is healthy. And so, you know, uh, we can say we tied everything up in a boat. That's not really life, but amends were made. Apologies were made. But I think for me, the growth of it is, is that I did learn a few things that came out of his mouth that what he didn't know, he didn't know. And I was shocked at a few things. Uh, that that he truly didn't know, but hey, that's life. And when you assume mm. things, mm-hmm. the word assumptions, uh, I'm getting really deep here. But when you assume things about others, then the assumptions turn into expectations, and then expectations, on the most most simplistic terms, when they aren't met, then you can get angry, and then that anger gets old, which turns into resentment. And then that resentment, regardless of what's going on in the world, if you've got resentment in you, that's poison. That is absolute. Po- so, so regardless of what he did or didn't believe of what I said, or regardless of what I did believe what, what he said, I think the point of it is, is talk it out, have communication, open lines of communications on some points we can agree to disagree. And on other points, the light bulb went off and I'm like, well, I got a choice to believe him or not. If he didn't really know a, B and C, well then D is exactly kind of the result of it all. And so, um, it was cleansing. It was, uh, cathartic. I, there you go. It, it is, it, it, you know, it's probably a conversation need to be had. Uh, what did I want to have it? Uh, last year, last month, two years, three years. No, I, I, I didn't. Uh, but I did, and now I'm glad that I did. Um, life is too short. I, I, I'm just kind of j- j- jumping back into the the Jay Briscoe or even in the yes. Don West or e- e- any of that, just kind of the nonsense, Conrad. But 
that's why I don't want to table this, that the conversation I had with Vince Russo and found out, I'll call them facts because now they are the facts. They were very important to me. The, 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 the personal stuff with my family and, and that kind of stuff that we discussed is very important for me. It's who I am. It's, 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 it's who my family is, the truth, the realities of all the situations. But if he didn't know the realities, he didn't know. And so, uh, can't hang that on him certainly anymore. And so we've kind of moved on through that. And, uh, that's life. That's life on life's terms. And, um, I'm glad I'm this side of it. Do you have that conversation after you heard about Jay? No. And that conversation. Uh, good, wow. No. Uh, found out Jay on the flight last Wednesday. That conversation was last Monday. Oh, after we taped. It was. Yeah. It, it was. It was. I um I'd like to think that I've become uh, a friend of yours and gotten to know you pretty well. And my read on this was always that your feelings were hurt. And I know that you may not necessarily agree with that classification, but I've come to know you to be a pretty emotional person. And we've had some private conversations where you maybe tongue in cheek, say I have some emotional intelligence, but I, I, I know for sure you, you have a very high, all kidding aside, your emotional intelligence is very high. Well, I know that you are an emotional person. And so sometimes you wear your heart on your sleeve a little bit and I could see how you just had your feelings hurt. And I always behind the scenes have rooted for and advocated for, Hey, y'all should just talk. Uh, because when you and I started doing business together, one of the very first things you stressed that you learned through your TNA experiment was over communicate. Mm. Every problem you ever had, whether it was personal or professional, you would tell me they could have been a lot easier and less, less painful if you had just over communicated. And I'm glad to hear that no matter what you think of Jeff or Vince, that they had a chance to communicate for the first time in a long time. But what's interesting is I didn't know this conversation happened. I just started getting tagged in it in social because he sort of at least acknowledged that you guys spoke. I don't think he shared any details, but. I wasn't sure if that was okay or not. So I just threw it out there and just, you know, see what happened here. But I, I do hope that the lesson that the takeaway, and I realize well, this sounds a little soapboxy and I don't mean for it to, but in light of what we just learned about Jay Briscoe and how short life and fragile life can be, man, it sure does make it a lot easier. If you just clear your conscience and, 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 and get some of that clutter out of your brain and just make the effort. And I always ask myself self. If I do this, what's the worst thing that could happen? Yes. And if that happened, could I live with it? And you may, you put yourself out there to Vince and I think you're probably in a better headspace for it. No. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's it. I am so glad at the end of the day. And it, look, everything happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen. Yes. R regardless if I should have called a year ago or two years ago, or he should have called a year ago or two years ago, or the open lines of communication, whatever it may be, but it happened right when he was supposed to. Uh, yes, Conrad, the, um, and look, this gets way deep into it, but I, I think a lot of people will be able to relate to this. I was in my early upbringing. It behooved me. It benefited me, maybe even protected me to keep my mouth shut. And just the simple fact you grew up in a divorced family and your parents, yes. I never saw them have a civil conversation in my entire life. All my mom passed away a couple of years ago. But when you grow up in that kind of environment, I'm not, this is no self pity, no. It, it, but it, it goes to the point is, I think the protection component of I'm just going to stuff this. I'm not going to talk about it in a lot of ways, kind of the learned behavior that I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and not talk it out. Um, and that's the, what you just said. That's the absolute worst thing you can do. Yeah. You bottle uh, it up and carry it around with you. Yeah. Well, you just said 
what's the absolutely worst thing that can happen to you after having a conversation? You're exactly as mad as you were before. What yeah. did you really lose? I mean, that, yeah. that's probably the worst result. Or maybe you get a little madder and then you go back to having that resentment because the resentment is just old anger. Uh, and, and so, yes, I told you, pal, your emotional intelligence. But look, uh, although I may be a full horseman and led the NWO oh, uh, and other yeah. things, but no, I'll get it aside. There, there are th certain things about uh, dealing with life situations and you may be really, really good in business or really, really good in creative or athletically, but just relationship based, uh, Conrad, I, I failed. I don't mind saying it. I, I failed in just about every relationship I ever had, uh, until I got sober. And that's, that is up there at the very top of, of, of getting sober and understanding how to deal with life on life's terms. I got a little deep there, but that that's the reality of it. It really is. That is the true reality. We talked about Owen. Oh, my best buddy passed away. Tragic accident. Okay, great. Back to work. Who does that? It's, it's, it's insanity.